Entitled parent helped entitled kid beat up a classmate, got fined and arrested. I just saw this on the newsfeed. Yes, these idiots do exist. Entitled parent is facing criminal charges after Metro Police say she helped entitled parent beat up a classmate at a school bus stop. Entitled parent, 30, was arrested after the 8.30am Monday incident at Musfreesboro Pike and Borrowwood Drive. According to an arrest affidavit, the victim was approached by entitled parent and entitled kid. Entitled parent then ordered entitled kid to begin assaulting the victim because of a reported incident between the two juveniles on Friday, the affidavit stated. It was not immediately known what the incident entailed. Students on the bus filmed the assault, which police said showed entitled parent and entitled kid holding the victim on the ground while they both assaulted the victim. The affidavit goes on to say that the victim told police officers that entitled parent kicked her in the face and struck her with her hands. Police say the video also shows entitled parent holding the victim down while entitled kid assaults the victim dozens of times. Entitled parent was charged with assault and was released from the metro jail on $7,500 bond. She's due in court next month for a hearing. Yeah, I just don't understand the brain malfunction that causes adults to act like this. I agree, what, what's wrong with people? Our next story was posted by user Asketman titled, The Bloodline is More Important Than My Child's Life Choices. I met a few entitled parents in my time, but this is the first one that annoyed me enough to warrant a post. I met her at this conference for our union, so we wound up on a bus together for three hours. She was okay on the way up, but on the way home she said something that had me wanting to switch seats. I have an awful memory, so this isn't word for word, but I swear that this is a real conversation that actually happened. The cast is the usual, entitled parents, me, and friend. I came into the conversation a little late because I was zoning out on my phone and don't care to listen to mums talking about their kids, so I'll start from the line that caught my attention. Oh, my son really wants to go into the military, but I won't let him. Okay, but you can't stop him when he turns 18. Oh yes I can. There's a law that says I can stop him if he's the last male in the bloodline. Who the hell cares about bloodlines? I do. They're very important. My bloodline dies with me. I'm child free thanks to people like entitled parents. I won't let him go. He's just gonna have to deal with it. So with this law when he hits 25, can you still stop him from going? Oh yes! That's freaking stupid. Entitled parent gives me this wide eyed dirty look like she can't believe I dared say it. After that, I went back to my phone shaking my head. I can't believe the amount of power that parents think they deserve to have over their kids. This kid is going to find a way into the military if that's really what he wants to do with his life, and she's going to have to miss out on being there to see him graduate from training, earn medals, come home, etc. It's just sad. I really hope that there isn't a real law, bloodlines and continuing the family name are the stupidest things in my opinion. What if her son ends up gay? What if he just decides that he doesn't want to have kids? You can't force someone to continue your legacy, especially if you're just some lady living in a tiny town that literally no one cares about. You are not freaking royalty. And our next story was posted by user Sasha Kawa, titled, I might get my cat stolen by an entitled mum. Some people requested the cat tax and I did my best and tried. I also included a picture from my balcony I usually jump up on table or the flowers basket. I decided to put the table farther away and take off the flower thingies, so if the crazy tramp comes back, she can't grab them. Kitty tax. And here's a picture of the cat. I never thought I'd post here, and I wish I wouldn't have to. This happened a few days ago, and now that I'm done telling my family and friends, I thought I'd share it on Reddit. If anyone has any advice on how to handle this, it's appreciated. Long story, TLDR at bottom, English is not my first language, and I'm on mobile. Ah, oh, the holy trinity. Our backstory. A few months ago, I moved back to my hometown. My new apartment is on the ground floor with a big balcony. Since I have two indoor cats, I secured it with a cat-proof net all around. I usually leave my balcony door open with the shutter down, leaving only enough room for the cats to get out, so they can enjoy the sun and watch outside life. I live in an upper middle class area, so I don't really worry about break-ins, well, at least until now. My cats are shy, and one usually hides from strangers. 
The other one is shy but super friendly and will talk to people who engage with him. The cast, Entitled Mum, Me, Mysterious Egg, and Teddy, the relevant cat here. The incident. I was home that day, it was sunny outside. The balcony door was open, the shutters pulled up, and the cats outside while I was cleaning inside. Since it was a nice day, the neighborhood kids were outside playing. Soon, they were playing on the lawn in front of my apartment. I could hear them saying things like, There's the kitty, where's the other kitty? I'm used to people reacting to my cats, since they're outside and honestly bloody cute. Teddy, the friendly one, was happily chirping and meowing at the kids. The other one was inside sleeping on his scratching post. Suddenly, they start screaming and fake barking. I turned to the balcony door and could see Teddy running inside, quite disturbed and scared. He goes into hiding. I'm quite ticked at the kids and want to tell them off, but they're gone. A few minutes later, I can hear them again, whispering and laughing and shushing each other. I'm suspicious, so I go outside and I see them trying to loosen the net. I ask them what they're doing and tell them that they scared my cat, and if I ever catch them doing that again, there will be consequences. I don't know what consequences, but probably reports of missing kids. <laughs> they look shocked and one whispers a quiet sorry, and they take off. Good. Skip forward about half an hour. I hear a voice screaming, Excuse me? Hello? Is anyone there? I go outside and there she is. Entitled mother in her full glory with her kids hiding behind her. Yes? Did you tell off my kids? Oh yes, they were scaring my cat and trying to loosen the net. I told them not to do that. They just want to play with the cat. They tried to get it out since you don't care and always lock it out on the balcony. They just want to rescue an abused cat. Give it to me. Now I'm baffled. I know it's hard to see that the balcony door is open, but seriously? The cats constantly walk in and out. They're not locked out or abused. I try to explain it to her, but she won't have none of it. She goes on about how I'm an abusive owner, and the cat obviously wants to be rescued since it's screaming for help. He's not screaming for help, he's just a friendly talker. He's always chirping and meowing at people who give him attention. He's obviously trying to get people's attention so they'll get him away from you. If we see him locked out again, I'll cut the net and save him. She grabs her kids and walks off, leaving me dumbfounded. So, yeah. Now I can't let my cats out and I don't know what to do. They're constantly screaming to be let out, but I'm scared she'll steal them. My mum thinks I'm overreacting and nothing will happen, but my cats are my life, and if they're gone, I'll be devastated. They're both rescues and I put a lot of work and affection into raising them for traumatised fluff balls to be happy, friendly kitties who were not scared of every sound and movement. That's why I was so mad at the kids scaring Teddy. I don't want him to become scared and traumatised again. Excuse the long rambling, but this whole incident still disturbs me. And our next story was posted by user AnxiousTRex30, titled Entitled mum wants to tattle on me, a fully grown woman, to my parents about my attitude and abusing my dog. Alright you guys, this went down a few days ago and I've been chuckling and trying to understand ever since. Sorry it's so long, older generations lack of logical reasoning just astounds me sometimes. A little backstory slash clarification is required, sorry. My hubby and I work hard and we've done well for ourselves. My hubby also loves golf and is quite good at it. Because of both of these, we were able and decided to purchase a nice first home on a golf course, which you can imagine is in a neighborhood of mostly retired folks. We are extremely frugal with our income and are definitely homebodies, so we invested in a house that I guess doesn't seem attainable for a couple of our age. I also tend to look younger than my 25 years when I'm in lounge clothes, no makeup, and hair tied up in a mess. This is important later. Our car star, Entitled Mother, maybe even Grandma, I'm not one to assume, Entitled Kid, me, the overprotective dog mum, are boo, a three pole pound of cuteness overload. Story. There was a warning on next door app that a coyote was spotted on our golf course and to watch your fur babies closely. My pup was a gift from my hubby as I have some medical issues that cause me to spend way more time in bed than the average bear. 
and my pup keeps the depression at bay. He is ridiculously well behaved, but he is very small and never around children, so they kind of stress him out. I was in my backyard with Abu for a super quick potty break when Entitled Mother, a relevant dad, and Entitled Kid roll up to the green that butts up to our backyard. I see golfers all day every day, so I usually don't acknowledge them, nor they me. Entitled Kid is smacking the golf ball around the green with zero attempts at actually golfing when he spots my little pup and screams, Mom, look at that dog! I smile and wave because it was kind of cute, and then call Abu to head inside, even though he hasn't peed, as I already have a sense to avoid any further interaction. Too late. Entitled Kid has ran over and is crawling through the fence that separates my yard from the course. It's just decorative, so huge gaps. Abu sees this and runs to hide behind me as Entitled Kid lunges after him and ends up on his knees at my feet. This kid is literally on my feet, so I can't move without stepping on Abu behind me. I get out of the entanglement and snatch up my pup as Entitled Mother climbs through the fence. Entitled Mother goes, What a cute little guy. We can't go on without giving him some love. Oh thanks, he's my little fur baby. Entitled Kid, meanwhile, is literally trying to tear him from my hands while I gracefully try to hold him away. Go on Entitled Kid, give him a cuddle. I'm sorry, he's really not used to kids. He's sweet as can be, but can gnarl and nip if he feels threatened. Oh, it's okay, we have a big lab at home, so Entitled Kid knows how to handle dogs. Let him hold him for just a minute. Look, I'm sorry, he's already scared and will wiggle out of your son's hands, and I just don't want him to be dropped. I am literally spinning in circles at this point to keep Entitled Kid's grubby little hands off my dog. This apparently insulted Entitled Mother, as her face dropped and she went dead serious. If he's so fragile, then why do you have him out here without a leash? Don't you know there are coyotes? I do. He's trained to never be more than a few feet from me, and because of his size his trachea isn't fully developed, and the vet recommended we strain as little of it as possible with a leash. That's unfortunately true, we don't even have a collar on him unless he's outside. Entitled Mother literally scoffed, <coughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I've heard. What did you do to him? Did you hurt him while you were training him? Me getting seriously peeved at this point by someone insulting I would hurt my dog while still playing keep away with her brat. No, he was the runt of his litter and has more than a few health issues because of it. I treat this pup better than I treat myself honestly. Now will you please ask your son to stop grabbing at him? Entitled kid, saying nothing up to this point besides frustrated gargles, snapped at me. Just let me hold him! No! He's too small and fragile to be held by a child. We're going inside now. Have a nice day. Now just you wait a minute, little missy. All we wanted to do was hold your dog. Now you've been rude, inconsiderate, and I'm not sure you aren't abusing that poor little thing. Give me the dog, and I want to talk to your parents. Do they know you just let him run around and do whatever he wants? You're probably just as spoiled as he is, which is why you think you can just walk away when someone's talking to you. Entitled Kid, still grabbing at Abu in my arms, unintentionally grabbed slash grazed my lady chest, which caused a reflex of waving my arm to knock his away. This in no way hurt either of us, but it ticked them both off. Entitled Mother goes, What's your problem? Lady, listen, please keep your child from touching me or my dog, or get out of my yard, and go back to your round so that my dog can just pee. I literally just got home from work, and his bladder is probably about to explode, and I would prefer it not be on me or my carpet. You keep that tiny thing in a kennel all day? So you are abusing him! Who are your parents? I know everyone in this neighborhood, and I would like a word with them. We have never had unruly teens here, and I won't let you be here first. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. After that, I was laughing. I don't know who this woman is, but she doesn't know me, she obviously doesn't know everyone, and she obviously isn't someone important in the HOA, so I don't give a fuck anymore. Me, with a submissive smile to get her to give up the goods. Okay ma'am, what's your name? Entitled Mother proudly states the name that I've never heard. I repeat the name. Noted. Now, that it's any of your business or matters, but this is my house. You're trespassing on my yard. My husband flaunts ring in her face, and I are both working during the day. So yes, he stays in a kennel, but that's because he likes that it feels secure and safe. 
This dog runs our house, and I guarantee no dog has ever been treated better. Now get yourself and your son the hell off my property while I go write a little note to the clubhouse about Repeat's name and her ridiculous antics that I'm sure are not considered proper etiquette for this course. Entitled Kid never cried, or even acted like he was aware of any of this, was happening, and continued to reach for Abu. My last statement was being said while literally holding his wrist in the air with one hand as far away as possible so he couldn't reach Abu in the other arm with his other hand. He acted like fighting a stranger to get something was completely normal behaviour. Meanwhile, the dad, I'm assuming dad, putted, gathered his things, and went to sit in the cart like nothing was happening whatsoever. This was all in like 5 minutes, but still, what the fuck? Entitled mother barked Entitled Kid's name after being at a loss for words and shooting daggers at me for more than an awkward second. He whined, But mom, the dog! She just walked away, and after a few seconds he followed. I couldn't walk away until they did, and at this point I was holding Entitled Kid away and honestly think he would have followed me all the way inside like it was no big deal. This was seriously the strangest interaction I think I've ever had. I missed a few statements between the two of us, but I think I got the most important parts. Entitled Mother never got my name, but I'm not worried about her because she probably still thinks I'm some teen living in with my parents' house. Since I'm not, no one will know who she's talking about, lol. Anyway, I hope it was as bizarre to you guys as it was to me. I've tried to include my puppy tax and a screenshot of the coyote warning, as I'm sure that it's also random, but I can't figure out how. Anyone have tips? I'll keep trying, thanks. And if you guys want to see that, just click on the post in the description and you'll find it. Our next story was posted by user Black Devil Girl, titled, Don't go to your grandma's funeral and burial, take care of my child instead. Note, who gives a crap whether this is on mobile or not? Here, here. This was the grandma on my dad's side, so my uncle leaves my cousin with me when she gets home from school. I get out of my high school at 2.05, she gets out at 2.20. So yesterday, my mum told him I would be going to a funeral and burial today and tomorrow. Even though he was told last week, he still got upset demanding I stay at home to take care of her. So I coldly said, no I won't. Although, I absolutely hate people on my dad's side, especially the women. But since we promised we'd be there, nothing can be done about it. You know what? He gives a face like I just killed his wife. Soon he began yelling at me that I must stay behind. So I just calmly but coldly said, if you don't like it, don't work for the day or find yourself a babysitter. And I just glared and lightly kicked his leg when he approached my mum demanding the same thing. By the way, we live together, so there's no avoiding him. Oh, yikes. Our next story was posted by user The Night's End, titled, Mother is enraged because I won't be her caregiver anymore after repeatedly abusing me mentally, physically, and emotionally. To give you a backstory, my mother just turned 62, a little under a month ago, and has been facing health problems. All my life, my mother always had suspected behavior, but due to her mental illness and possible Alzheimer's diagnosis, it has been hidden. For example, my mother would whoop me, but not the average whooping with a belt. Her whippings would last around 10 minutes, and she would not only whip me like she was releasing her anger, but she would also punch me. Fun fact, I was called Scarface in middle school because my mother punched me with her ring on, permanently giving me a scar on my eyebrow. She would also tell me from a young age that I was supposed to take care of her no matter what. This would come to fruition around this time, since I'm her only caregiver, and when she made me miss a week of school in 2013 to take care of her while she had shingles. The other day, I was walking downstairs when I overheard my mother and her cousin speaking. My mother stated with no hesitation, the night's end is going to take care of me when he starts his career and sets himself up. I'm 20 years old with no career, trying to get into nursing school, finding a way to pay for it and more. On top of that, I recently lost a friend to gun violence. My mother didn't show any signs of emotion towards me at all, and when I broke the news, she told me, well, I have an appointment on Monday. This is also the same woman 
who told me to quit my dreams to take care of her. And when you set yourself up independently, I'm going to still need your help. My mother is not only abusive mentally and emotionally, but now just recovering from her calling me an invalid for the bulk of my life, but she is really violent. This month alone, my mother has tried to choke me, resulting in her ripping three of my shirts. She also asks me to cut a certain portion of my paycheck to fund the roof over my head and the food in my stomach. I work for $9 an hour at Staples. I don't have money to blow my nose with. I'm struggling to even save because I have to feed myself, fund my education, pay my bills, put gas in the car and more. That all doesn't matter because I have to take care of her. Whoa, that's heavy. Anyway guys, that's the last one for today. I hope you guys have a good day. Subscribe to the channel if you like it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.